Hello everyone, it's me, it's me, it's T-R-E-N-T. -E and did you ever have that game from your childhood that stood out to you not because it was fun, but because it was an unholy conjuring of difficult game design and unfair advantages? Why are you looking at me like that? Stop, I had a good childhood, darn it! Growing up, anytime I'd visit my grandparents' house, I would always pester them to plug in their old Super Nintendo Entertainment System so I could play the one game they had for it, Super Mario All-Stars. I didn't care that every other title from their library had been lost to time, I was just stoked I got to play one of five fabulous games, since the version they owned included Super Mario World as one of the pack-in games. Everyone's familiar with the original All-Stars, right? They're 16-bit recreations of the original NES trilogy of Mario games, all included in one neat little bundle. Now, as a dumb kid, I had no idea that what I was playing were remakes of older games. I just assumed that this was the way it had always been. For instance, when I saw the game Super Mario The Lost Levels on the title screen, I was immediately intrigued by the name alone. Lost Levels? Wait, there's more to the original Super Mario Brothers that I missed? Were these levels lost to time? Why were they cut? What's up with this sticker that says four super players on the cover? Oh, did this game think I'm not super enough? Well, this is going to keep me up all night. I need to know what I'm missing. I'm going to put this in my Nintendo right now and find out. Let's do one sec. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. The sticker on the front does not lie, folks. This game really is meant for super players. Super Mario The Lost Levels is quite possibly one of the most unfair Nintendo games I've ever played. And I won't subject myself to- So what exactly is this game? Most of you probably already know, but I'll enlighten you anyways. After the original Super Mario Brothers was such a big hit, Nintendo decided to strike while the iron was hot and get a sequel out by summer of the following year. Reusing a lot of scrapped ideas and levels left on the cutting room floor from the first game, co-creators Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka put together the original version of what Japanese gamers came to know as Super Mario Brothers 2, intended for gamers who had mastered the original and thought it was way too easy. During localization, Nintendo of America took one good look at the game, said, Nah fam, and canned the idea of bringing it overseas. The thought was that Western gamers would come to hate the series if they had to go through a difficulty curve as steep as this one, and decided to find another alternative. Enter Doki Doki Panic, a game released by Nintendo in conjunction with Japanese broadcasting station Fuji TV. In the game, Fuji's mascots enter the world of Subcon to rescue their kidnapped children from the evil Frog King Wart. The game was repackaged as a Mario title, and was released in 1988 as the American version of Super Mario Bros. 2. It wouldn't be until five years later in 1993 that everyone got to experience their own respective missing pieces of the puzzle with the release of All-Stars. This allowed both sides to try out each version of Mario 2. In Japan, they got Super Mario USA, and in America, we got the Lost Levels. It's safe to say we got the short end of the stick on that regard, but enough chatter. Let's just dive into Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels and see how long it takes me for me to pull the hair out of my skull. So for this game, instead of a one-player or two-player option, you get the choice of playing as either Mario or Luigi. Mario plays exactly like how he did in the first game, while Luigi, for the first time ever, has a super high jump but has terrible traction to compensate. He slides around everywhere and is completely unreliable for platforming sections, so... Screw that noise, we're gonna go with Mario first, considering Luigi's pretty much the hard mode of this game. You know, aside from some awkward level design at first, the first level's actually not so bad. Oh hey, they even made the Super Mushroom purple in this game. Well, that's a cool little quirk and... The mushroom... killed me? Alas, poor Mario. I knew him, people of the internet. A fellow of utmost bravery who would come in and cave in a turtle's skull with his size 10 boot in order to save a princess who would constantly get kidnapped by the same dragon over and over again and how abhorred he's become in his own video game. Actually, that's a new power-up in this game, or I guess a power down, the poison mushroom. Touching it will either kill you or make you smaller, so avoid it like hell if you see it. My only gripe is, why did this have to be here in the first place? The game's already designed to be harder, do we really need another thing on the list of things wanting me dead? Now you might be thinking, Tread, this game doesn't look so bad. Well, shut up, you idiot. I haven't even gotten to the worst parts yet. World 1 is nothing. 
World 2 is where Miyamoto and company decided to take a real nosedive in quality and really piss in your chips. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not a big fan of this game's level design. It bears repeating, but it reminds me of something a 4-year-old made on Super Mario Maker. It's awkward, disjointed, and doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So imagine my surprise when I get to this point. Oh, hey, the level just ended. Good. Means I don't have to play any more of this freaking game. There's an invisible block. Okay, fine. My overreaction aside, who thought this was a good idea? Let's just jump across and forget this ever happened. Okay, come on! I just want to get up there! I can't get a running start because you can't backtrack in this game, so what do I do? Okay, screw it. Let's just kill myself and restart the level. I, if I leave myself enough room, I'll probably be able to get up there this time. Okay, and jump. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> All right, and oh, come on! Come on, Mario! Come on, Mario! Jump! Jeez, I'm crow! Okay, let's try this as Luigi. He's got a better jump in this game. Okay, I'm back here with Luigi. Luckily, I stopped, stocked up on lives using the infinite one-up trick, and. Okay, that one was easy. Okay, no, no, no. Gosh darn it! What, did he go skating in butter before we started this magical quest? Alright, and... No, oh, there's a second block. Oh, great. Well, maybe this will make it easier. And... Let's go Fat Man! Okay, and... Jeez, finally! Oh, and it's not like it's worth it or anything. World 3 is just as bad as this one. In fact, it just gets worse. It gets worse with each world you go through. It's not worth it. Why do I want to keep pushing myself to beat something I don't want to play? You know what? I'm going to find a warp zone so I can just get to the end of this game. It takes you back to, to World 1-1. And it traps you down there with no way of escape. And the only way out is to commit suicide and jump down that bottomless pit so you can restart the level. Because you can't go forward. The warp zone only takes you back. A real life internet troll it annoys you it teases you and you decide to persist just so you can have that measly little bragging rights of trying to complete this game it looks like mario plays like mario but it doesn't feel like mario the level design is so painful to try and get through that i have no shame in putting this game down and never coming back Again, I know I probably suck at this game, but it doesn't get better from here. In fact, they pull the same invisible block BS with you a few more times. Why? Haven't I suffered enough? Look, if you can get by and enjoy this steaming pile of chain chomp droppings, then good for you. But I wouldn't recommend this game to anyone looking to have a good time in the future. You know, at least now I've put that game behind me, so I never have to play it ever again. Jeez, I... I really hope I get to play a good game on this show for once. You know, maybe something a little more modern. You know, something a little more nostalgic. Something a little along the lines of, uh, Shrek the Game! <laughs> you know, I loved this movie as a kid. And, you know, it's on one of my favorite consoles of all time, the OG Xbox. How could this game possibly be any bad? I'm sure, without a doubt, that this game's gonna be 100% a great t Oh, you sons of... One game at a time, Trent. One game at a time. That was Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels. I've been regular Trent, 
And until next time, take care and spike your hair. I'll see you.